I want to welcome you to the, uh, the uh, Union Historic uh, Union Market. And isn't this an amazing transformation uh, that has taken place uh, here? Um, the markets, public markets in the District of Columbia actually have a rich history uh, dating back to uh, 1871, where what then was the largest market, the center market. Uh, how many were around in 1871? <laughs> uh, it was the largest, I guess, the largest market in D.C., uh, and it was uh, obviously the center of a vibrant commercial life uh, here in the District of Columbia. It was located, can you believe it? Harold, you probably know this because you're pretty good with this stuff. Located between the Capitol and the White House. Can you picture a market like this located between those two uh, iconic uh, buildings at this stage? Anyway, it was torn down in 1931 uh, to make way for the National Archives, uh, which now stands there, of course. Um, the uh, farmers, I guess the farmers center market, as it then was called, was then located uh, here, joined with the Union Terminal Market. Uh, and located here on this site, um, which I happen to know a little bit about. I was saying to some people earlier, I actually grew up in this neighborhood. I grew up two blocks down. And some of you may know I was a baseball player, and the first baseball I ever played was across the street, on this field across the street. So this is like coming back uh, home uh, for me. I want to uh, thank the, some people who are here. Steve Boyle who is the principal with Edens. I asked uh, Steve, please stand up and be recognized. Where are you, Steve? Oh, I guess you're already standing up. <laughs> Didn't realize you were off to my right, so thanks, thanks Steve, for being in. I was here, what, a few months ago for a very nice uh, dinner. dinner. Um, and uh, I guess you're also representing Gal Yudet today as well. Who's representing Gal Yudet? Okay, how are you? Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Um, anyway, um, we think that the transformation that has taken place here is emblematic of what has taken place here in Ward 5, and we want to continue uh, with this effort today. Uh, that's why I'm excited to be here with our council member today to announce the creation of the Ward 5 Industrial Land Trans Transformation uh, Task Force. This task force will be responsible for helping us develop a strategy uh, to, I guess I would say, modernize and upgrade the industrial areas uh, of Ward 5. Um, as you may know, you may not know actually, that Ward 5 is home to roughly 75% of all the industrial land in the District of Columbia. Uh, so as a result, enhancing the land and reimagining it, if you will, just as Edens has already done uh, with this market is uh, a big key to us being able to grow and attract businesses here uh, in the District of Columbia and, of course, attract more employers, which will put more of our people uh, to work, including those in Ward 5 and across the city. Um, I think this is really a unique and exciting time uh, for Ward 5 as well as the entire city. Um, we had a population decline for a long period of time, as you know, Harriet, as you know, council member, and we're growing again now. We're adding over 1,100, uh, around 1,100 new people uh, every month in the District of Columbia. Our population is now 632,000, and what is also amazing that a lot of people don't know, our population is now larger than two states. Uh, it's larger than the population of Vermont and larger than the population of Vermont. Uh, Vermont and uh, Wyoming, excuse me. Uh, so we're on our way to continue, uh, continued growth. Also, hopefully you know, just a couple of days ago, we announced uh, the results of our audit, a $400 million, $417 million surplus that brings our fund balance to $1.5 billion that will really resonate well uh, with the Wall Street uh, rating agencies, which rate our bonds, uh, which is hugely important in this rather precarious fiscal environment that we've been in now for uh, several years, um, those ratings determine the interest rates that we pay uh, on our bonds, which then is a, is a, uh, a cost to the uh, taxpayers, 
which we try to keep as low as we uh, possibly can. Um, you know, just, just to say again, the priorities of our administration are threefold. One, growing and diversifying our economy, which we've spent a good deal of time on, uh, educating and preparing the workforce of the future, and improving the quality of life for everybody here in the District of Columbia. Some of you all will remember, and I was just talking to Steve about it, our five-year economic development plan uh, was released uh, just in uh, November, and it includes uh, six bold visions, some of which uh, include uh, becoming the, not a, the tech center uh, for the East Coast, uh, ending retail leakage. Um, again, we, our best calculations indicate that we lose a billion, not a million, a billion dollars a year because people who live in this city choose to go shop elsewhere, in Maryland, in Virginia, or other places. And we're trying to develop those amenities right here in the, in the city so that people will choose to spend their money in the city. A good example is where we are right now, and a good example, which also is in Ward 5 council members, you well know, is Costco, uh, which opened at the end of November and uh, was, is, was in its early days was doing about $750,000 uh, a day. Uh, of business. And I actually rode through the parking lot one day to look at the tags, and about half were DC tags and half were, were tags from Maryland and Virginia, which means we're not only stemming leakage, uh, Harriet, we're also helping others create leakage coming into the District of Columbia. <laughs> so in any event, you probably would ask, you know, what, the, what do the, does this industrial land have to do with those priorities, which also includes, by the way, a global medical center which, uh, again, as council members, you know, we envision being in Ward 5 at, uh, Mac at the Macmillan Reservoir uh, site. And uh, we're already moving forward with the planning uh, of that. Um, we have a healthy industrial fabric uh, here in the District of Columbia, but we also have some areas as well that really need to be uh, rejuvenated. Uh, they need to be rethought, they need to be reimagined, they need to be revived, they need to be re uh, And that's the purpose of this task force, to be able to work on that. Uh, you know, thinking in terms of markets, food production, commercial kitchens, art studios, galleries, a host of purposes that we already are developing in other parts of the uh, city. Uh, things like theater production, uh, as well as designer uh, boutiques, all of which really I can't a lot of people wouldn't have thought of in terms of uh, the industrial areas uh, of this city. So today, I've signed a <clears throat> mayoral order to create the Ward 5 Industrial uh, Land Transformation uh, Task Force. And uh, I will be delighted to continue to work with Council Member McDuffie uh, to be able to make this uh, happen. Um, he's a council member who really hasn't even been in place for a year yet. Uh, came into office, what, last May? last May, and uh, really hit the ground running uh, when he was uh, elected and hasn't stopped uh, since. And this is yet another example of the energy, the vitality, the uh, vision uh, that he brings uh, to his uh, job as the uh, ward council member. Um, the person who will chair this, I can't think of a better person to chair this, frankly, and that is the director of planning for the city, and that is Harriet Tregoni, uh, who you will hear from shortly. Uh, many of our difficult tasks, she's the go-to person. And she's the go-to person again uh, on this one. We also have, so that it's clear that we're quite serious about this, we've appointed a number of our agency directors to uh, be a part of this task force. Terry Bellamy, who's our director of transportation, who is here with us today. Terry, uh, we're delighted you'll be a part of this. Bill Howland, who's our director of public works. Um, Keith Anderson, uh, who was here. Uh, he had another engagement, but I want to thank him for being here also, director of our Department of the Environment. Bill Hanlon, who is the director of the Department of General Services. Um, so all of this is because we want to take a look at the economic opportunities, and in that regard, I've asked the Chief Financial Officer, Dr. Natwar Gandhi, uh, if he too uh, would be a part uh, of this. And of course, having the community as a part of this is, as well is hugely important. And uh, I want to thank Eric Jones, uh, who is here, who is with, of course, Associated Builders and Contractors, um, <clears throat> to, who is also a resident of Ward 5, 
to be a part of this and lend his expertise. Jamie Fuhrer with the Trinidad Civic Association, uh, Rita Gay Lewis, who actually was at the ribbon cutting for her new home uh, in Ivy City uh, when, that was, uh, when that was finished. Uh, we actually have done a number of new homes in Ivy City, working with MANA, working with uh, several of the housing uh, organizations uh, there. Um, Vicki Leonard, who's a longtime Ward 5 resident uh, and has um, most recently been an economic advisor for the Mid-Atlantic Laborers uh, Cooperative uh, Trust. And there will be a fifth resident who will be appointed uh, as well. Uh, somebody who we had in mind is ill and probably won't be able to serve, so we'll select somebody else very shortly uh, to do that. Um, in any event, uh, it's an exciting day for Ward 5, and I want to invite uh, up now the uh, council member who I mentioned earlier, who is uh, coming up on a year uh, in office and really has brought a lot of enthusiasm and vitality uh, and excitement uh, to Ward 5. Please join me in welcoming Councilmember Kenya McDuffie. I got to tell you, I am so excited about today. And I know that there are residents throughout Ward 5 uh, who are excited about today. When I got elected, even before I got elected uh, on the campaign trail, we would go to meet and greets, we would you know, go to candidate forums, and there was always this conversation about Ward 5 being the place of least resistance. Uh, there was always this conversation, and, and, I, and I, I tell you, I don't even use these words except when I'm responding to people, but uh, uh, it's always a conversation about Ward 5 being a dumping ground. I do not believe that Ward 5 is a dumping ground, and I want to make perfectly clear that most Ward 5 residents who I speak to do not believe that Ward 5 is a dumping ground. But in order to move and really positively transform the future of Ward 5, we needed to take a step back, in my opinion. Think about where we've been, where we are now, and where we want to be. And there's so many people who have contributed to the fabric of Ward 5 uh, many of whom are here today, and, and I want to start uh, before I get into my remarks by thanking some of the folks uh, who are here today. Uh, I know we have a couple of ANC commissioners who are here, and I want to recognize them. We've got uh, ANC Commissioner Jackie Manning. I thought I saw her walk in. Jackie, are you here? Okay, she represents Ivy City. And, oh, there she is right there. Jackie represents Ivy City, and Jackie's been in the trenches for a while uh, as it relates to Ward 5 and an industrial land which she uh, 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 lives by. Uh, we also have uh, Carla Butler, uh, Commissioner Carla Butler, who's a new ANC commissioner who represents parts of Langdon and Woodridge uh, and the Butts areas around Bladensburg Road, where we've also got some, some uh, commercially zoned, industrial uh, zoned uh, land as well. And so I wanted to recognize them. I've got to tell you, you know, it's a well-documented history in Ward 5 of residents fighting, residents saying no to trash transfer stations, Residents saying no to, to bus lots. Residents saying no to a lot of the things that they just don't want in their neighborhood. And that's part of the past of Ward 5. Where we are today, standing right here in Union Market, I want to thank Steve Boyle and the folks for Union Market for opening up uh, today for us and, and allowing us to have the press conference here. I also want to stand, uh, say thank... Uh, uh, who's not here today, but President Hurwitz from Gallaudet, who's being represented by uh, Mr. Weiner, who's seated in the front row. Uh, these are folks who, who have a vision for this area. Uh, Gallaudet has been, uh, I, I got to tell you, has been phenomenal uh, for Ward 5, even before I arrived. But since I've taken office, they've really opened up to the community. We've had several events at Gallaudet, and President Hurwitz uh, has been a, a really a great partner uh, to, to my office, and I want to thank him for that. But we see right here in Union Market part of the potential of Ward 5. I've had several conversations with Office of Planning Director Harriet Tragoni, who I'm so pleased is going to lead this effort. Uh, who knows that there is some potential for Ward 5? Uh, who knows that Ward 5 is not the place of least resistance and that there are a lot of creative things we can do with the industrial land uh, that we have here? Now, Ward 5 plays host to 70% of the city's industrial land. 
And to some people, that poses a problem, particularly folks who, who live in areas that are adjacent to some of these uh, uh, facilities that sometimes have a negative impact. But I see opportunity. I think Harriet sees opportunity. I think a lot of the residents of Ward 5 see opportunity about how we can positively transform the future of Ward 5. And I'm so looking forward to the task force getting started, getting into this work. Uh, we've got uh, a four Ward 5 residents who I think uh, are excited about being members of the task force. And the mayor's already mentioned their names, but we've got Eric Jones, uh, who, who's a member of, uh, who works for DCBIA, but is also a, a lifelong resident, born and raised right here in Ward 5. And so it's going to be great to have Eric representing uh, uh, Ward 5 on the, on the task force. Uh, we've got Vicki Leonard Chambers, uh, who, who has been living in Ward 5 for quite some time, who served previously as an ANC commissioner, and who's doing a lot of great work uh, here in the ward for organized labor. So we're pleased to have Vicki be a part of the task force. We've got Jamie Furrier, who the mayor mentioned, uh, lives over in Trinidad, has an urban planning background, uh, who's been doing a lot of work in the Trinidad neighborhood as a member of the Civic Association over there, who's very excited about participating on the task force. And then we've got Peter Gay Lewis, who's a new uh, ANC commissioner who lives in Ivy City, uh, who also, if I'm not mistaken, was either born or raised right here in Ward 5 as well. And so she's got some deep roots here in the ward as well. And so uh, we've got a lot of great residents in Ward 5 who are going to complement uh, the Calvary, uh, who represent the government agencies, the Office of Planning, Department of Environment, Department of Transportation, and all the great agency heads who are being a part of this. But I got to tell you, when we thought about this last year, members of my staff and myself, and we said, you know, we're going to introduce a piece of legislation to create this War 5 Industrial Land Transformation Task Force. And we're all excited about it. We introduced it, quickly got some co-sponsors, quickly had a hearing in which Harriet Jagon and testified at. Then I had a conversation with the mayor about it. And he was like, you know what? I can save you the time of having to go through the legislative process. And we can do this via executive order. And to me, that demonstrates leadership, and it demonstrates vision. And I want to give Mayor Vincent C. Gray a round of applause for having that leadership and that vision. This task force is focused on War 5, but I want to be clear that the benefits that I think will accrue to the city are going to stretch well beyond the borders of War 5. This is really an opportunity to bring some businesses here um, that attract not only residents of War 5 and residents across the city, uh, but residents in other jurisdictions. As the mayor mentioned, the retail leakage uh, is incredible in this city. Costco is, is doing some amazing things to try to capture some of that leakage, and, and we're so proud uh, that we have Costco here in Ward 5. But when you look at some of the corridors along New York Avenue, Bladensburg Road, uh, you know, parts of Florida Avenue, Brentwood Road, there are a lot of facilities uh, that I think can make for new homes for some phenomenal businesses. And this obviously is not an attempt to, to push out any existing businesses, particularly those one who've, who've been here for quite some time uh, and who've, who've been really, uh, you know, through the dog days, uh, really working hard to maintain really viable businesses. And, and, I, and I appreciate all the work that they're doing. But I see some opportunities here. I always use the example of my six-year-old daughter. I have two daughters, six-year-olds and three-year-old daughters. My six-year-old is in first grade, and she's on a party circuit right now. And my wife and I, I tell you, every other weekend it seems like we're driving out to Rockville, to Gaithersburg, to Anne Arundel County, to Virginia, uh, to go to these, you know, jamborees and these, and these essentially kitty, kitty playhouses where they're having these birthday parties. And then we drive back into the city and we drive past New York Avenue and we drive past other parts of War 5 and we see all these warehouses, which in my opinion, can serve as a home for some of these types of facilities. Well, now is the time with the Industrial Land Transformation Task Force to think about how we bring some of those types of businesses, how we bring more recreational uses uh, to the corridors along War 5. And so I am uh, extremely ecstatic about this opportunity. Uh, very proud uh, that we're about to get going. Uh, I, again, we've talked about the past. We said no to all these things we didn't want it in the past in War 5. Now's the time to not simply say no to what we don't want, but to think about the things that we do want and say yes to things that we do want right here in War 5. Uh, again, I appreciate all that the mayor's done. I appreciate all of you for being here. I appreciate the residents who are going to participate uh, uh, in this task force and the community. There are going to be opportunities for you all to continue to participate as well, to give you input, to give you insight. Uh, those people who've been long-term uh, War 5 residents, who've dealt with some of the effects of, of the, the, the unwanted businesses, to be a part of what we're trying to do here today. 
uh, I see a very, very bright future for War 5. And I'm so happy to be a part of it. And I look forward to everybody contributing to positively transforming the future of 4 or 5. Thank you all so much for being here today. I look forward to the work of the task force. Uh, and let's go get it done. Right. And uh, <clears throat> just to underscore what the council member said, uh, we don't expect this task force to take five years to come back with uh, a finished product. Uh, I don't have any patience for that. I'm sure he doesn't have any patience for that. And I'm sure you don't either, do you, Harriet? Because you've got other things to do. So I think we can figure this one out in a relatively short period of time. And that having been said, I want to introduce the uh, chairperson uh, of this task force, our planning director, Harriet Trigoni. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm delighted to, uh, to, to be here today. This is a really exciting time for the city and for Ward 5. Uh, the mayor shared some of the highlights of our changing, growing city and the really unique opportunity that we have here. I'm, I'm privileged to get a chance to work with many of you to, to be a part of shaping the future of the city and of Ward 5. The city's demographics um, already look like what much of the rest of the U.S. will look like in 2050 growing diversity and smaller households, older residents and people wanting neighborhoods where they can age in place, young families who will remain uh, uh, here and call the city their home if we can give them educational quality and choice, uh, the development of housing and amenities that so many people desire, a mix of uses, walkable neighborhoods with great streetscapes and public realm, character and all the conveniences that people are looking for. We're seeing both people increasingly committed to our city, but also people moving into our city, many of them young professionals, attracted to vibrant neighborhoods and what I would call the luxury, and I use that word advisedly, the luxury of choice. Tremendous choices in transportation, thank you Director Bellamy, tremendous choices in housing, and increasingly choices in retail that will stop the leakage that the mayor talked about and really give people uh, an, an amazing array of opportunities. Our city is growing and changing, and, and, and what an opportunity we have now to take a look at how our industrial land can be better utilized to both create jobs and increase the tax base, as well as increase the desired neighborhood amenities. Um, the mayor has been a great pioneer and, and leader on the issue of sustainability. Um, and, and what it boils down to for our city is really taking the assets that we have and using them much more intensely and, and for much greater range of benefits. And that's exactly what we're going to look at here in Ward 5 with industrial land. And it's so fitting that we're making the announcement here at Union Market because the market embodies so much of what we want our industrial areas to be in our city. Vibrant, creative, attractive, innovative. Um, I can remember when we were going through the small area planning process for the Florida Avenue market. Uh, the, the, the plan was approved in October of 2009. How many of you participated in that process? Raise your hand if you did. I know Vicki did. I mean, uh, with the aspirations we heard from so many residents and property owners alike were to enhance this area, to protect and celebrate its historic character and maintain the wholesale market functions, but revitalize it, uh, bring in a mix of uses, make it more safe and welcoming, you know, have it uh, uh, offer more amenities to the neighborhood. So right here at Union Market, uh, we have a great example of the Red Apron Butchery. Uh, in the back is 11,000 square feet of commercial food production, something that you have to do on industrial land. But look, it has a storefront where anybody in the neighborhood could come in and be able to access some of the most amazing cuts of meat the, uh, of the highest quality that you can get in our region. Um, and, and that's exactly what we're talking about. How can we have the job creation that comes with the, the wealth of industrial lands, which is an absolute asset to the ward, but also have uh, additional amenities for the neighbors? I look forward to working with Councilmember McDuffie and with all the task force members. There's a lot that we can build on. That's why we know we can do this so quickly. A lot of useful analysis has been done in previous studies. We did an industrial land study in 2006 and a production distribution and repair facilities plan uh, in 2007. We intend to utilize that work and update it, as well as be informed by current trends such as the burgeoning creative economy and increasing local entrepreneurial interest in, in business and creative incubators, uh, and the potential to bring even new temporary uses to vacant and underutilized property. 
In the last few years, we've seen a lot of success with temporiums like we've had in Mount Pleasant and Shaw, the Central 14th Street Arts District, uh, and Luminate Anacostia. Those projects were successful not just um, uh, for local businesses, bringing new customers and increasing sales, but also providing creative community building and placemaking for residents, children, and, and families. We, can, we think we can apply a lot of those uh, tools and strategies to industrial zone land and begin to see some results very quickly. Uh, again, I look forward very much to chairing this task force and working with all of you to produce a report that guides us with realistic strategies to transform Ward 5's industrial lands. Thank you very much. All right, thank you uh, very much, Harriet. Thank you very much, council member. Before we open it up for questions from the media, um, I want to acknowledge one other person who's here. You know, our boards and commissions are hugely important to this city, and this is yet another example uh, of that. When we got here, I think we had 850, 900 vacancies, 900 vacancies on the boards and commissions. And with the leadership of Daryl Gorman, we have uh, appointed 850 people to the myriad uh, task forces and commissions and boards that we have uh, in the city. So Daryl is here with us today. This is yet another uh, of his uh, examples of his work. Uh, Daryl, I want to thank you for what you do every day for our city. All right, uh, do we have any questions from the uh, media? Mike? I really don't know, uh, Mike. You'd have to ask the Attorney General that question. I don't know that there's been any movement. Uh, you're talking about the case involving the uh, buses at Cromwell. I really don't know uh, whether there's been any further movement uh, or not. Um, but I think the question probably would be best put to him because he would, be, he would have more current knowledge on it uh, than I would. You mean recommendations from this task force? Well, I don't know. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to preempt what the task force is doing. I'm sure they will look at everything. Uh, Ivy City is just a part of the uh, industrial areas. You got the whole New York Avenue corridor. You got the V Street uh, corridor also, where you got warehouses from Bladensburg all the way over to South Dakota Avenue. So there's a lot of area that has to be looked at. Ivy City will be looked at in the course of that. So again, I don't want to preempt any uh, conclusions that they may reach after their study uh, of the areas of Ward 5 that now are industrial. All right, thank you all very much.